Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about shutter mode, more specifically mechanical shutter versus silent shutter. Now this is really a supplement to my Master Your Shutter Speed course for beginners, uh, where we kind of touched on it briefly, but I wanted to expand on that and talk more about the advantages and disadvantages of mechanical shutter versus electronic shutter. So let's talk about mechanical shutter first. Basically when we remove the lens from our camera, we'll see our sensor, but when we push the shutter button, Curtains will come down in front of the sensor before it starts the exposure, then turn the sensor on, then open the shutters for a length of time, and then close them again to end the exposure. And that length of time can be fractions of a second, it can be several seconds, etc. But that's basically how mechanical shutter works. Are, there are physical curtains, or sometimes they're called shutter blades, that open and close to create the exposure. Now there are subsets to the mechanical shutter like front curtain shutter, sometimes it's called EFCS or electronic front curtain shutter, uh, sometimes it's called anti-shock, but the idea being is instead of closing the shutters before taking the exposure, the shutters stay open, the camera turns the sensor on, and then to end the exposure after a certain amount of time, the shutters will close and that will be the end of the exposure. So as you saw in the video, when the curtains open and close, you can see them kind of bouncing inside the camera. And that motion may cause uh, vibrations inside the camera that will actually show up in your image and make your images just a little bit blurry, sometimes a lot blurry, depending on, you know, if you're using a telephoto lens or not. Now let's talk about electronic shutter. And it's very simple. Basically, the, the shutter blades stay open, exposing the sensor. And then when you push the shutter button, it'll turn the sensor on and then back off again for a certain amount of time, whatever you set your shutter speed to, and that will create the exposure. Now, some electronic shutters have a feature called anti-flicker, which we'll talk about in a minute, but uh, there are also subsets to the mechanical and electronic shutter that we need to talk about. Basically, whether you're using electronic shutter or mechanical shutter, you're gonna get a choice to use a single shot type shutter or a continuous shutter, which will give you also a rating in frames per second is like how quickly can it take images. So a single shot is just you push the shutter button, it takes one picture. Continuous shutter mode, basically you hold the shutter button down and the camera will continually take images or pictures as fast as it can. And that rate, the speed that it can take those pictures is usually referred to as frames per second. So you might see a camera that says, uh, this camera has a continuous shutter speed of 10 frames per second. One of the most common questions I get is, should I use mechanical shutter or should I use electronic shutter? And there's actually pros and cons to using each one. So let's go over what they are so that you can make a better decision about what shutter mode to use. Now, one of the biggest differences between using a mechanical shutter and an electronic shutter is something called the rolling shutter effect. So basically I took a picture of this fan while it was turned on with the mechanical shutter and you can see it pretty much froze the action or motion of the fan spinning without any distortion. Unlike when we use the electronic shutter, we got a lot of distortion in the fan and this is called the rolling shutter effect. So using mechanical shutter pretty much eliminates this problem. Uh, and that's why you might want to use mechanical shutter, particularly when you're taking pictures of like airplanes that have propellers or helicopters or anything that has motion. Now this is an example of rolling shutter when I'm just panning across to follow this duck as I'm taking its picture. And as you can see, the trees are very slanted when they should be perfectly vertical in this case. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a very fast moving object. It, all you have to do is be panning sometimes and you get this effect. Another way this happens sometimes is like if you're taking a picture of a bus, for example, driving by, you could be standing still, use silent shutter, and then when you take the picture, the bus will be slanted in the image. So you have to be careful of that uh, when you're using electronic shutter. Now, another problem is something called banding. And this is where you take pictures on their flickering light. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, when, when you're using a light powered by AC, uh, the lights are flickering at a certain frequency, like 60 hertz. And uh, when you're using electronic shutter, the sensor picks that up, and then you get this uneven lighting that looks kind of like this picture here, where it's kind of bright and dark and bright and dark. Uh, when you take pictures of TV sets, you might see some black bars in the TV. Um, and that's all due to the AC power. Now, when you're 
taking pictures and lighting that's powered by battery, like a, like a battery powered LED light, you know, any kind of battery powered lighting, you're not going to have this problem because that's under DC power, which is a direct current, but AC power is an alternating current source. So it's alternating from on to off, on to off. And that's why you see this banding when you use electronic shutter. Now, some cameras have an anti-flicker function where it'll try and detect the frequency of that flickering and minimize that or completely eliminate it in most cases. And it works pretty well, but it can still happen. Now, this problem is not limited to just photography and stills, but a lot of videographers also are very concerned about rolling shutter. Uh, so when they're looking at cameras or thinking about buying a camera, they always look for what is the rolling shutter effect of this camera, because some cameras are better at it than others. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that more later. But um, just know that these are the kind of issues that you need to look out for in your camera when you're using electronic shutter. Now, with that said, there are a lot of pros to using electronic shutter. So let's look at what those are. All right, so I've listed all of the pros and cons here. Um, one of the major benefits of using electronic shutter is you can get a much faster shutter speed. So, for example, uh, my camera will do 1 8,000th of a second in mechanical shutter. But in silent shutter, I can get shutter speeds up to 1 32,000th of a second. That's pretty amazing. Uh, you also get a faster continuous shooting. So when you hold the shutter button down, in mechanical shutter, my camera can do 10 frames per second. But in electronic shutter, I can do as many as 120 frames per second. So it's pretty amazing difference. Um, also, uh, electronic shutter is sometimes just called silent shutter because it's a silent operation. You push the shutter button, there's no sound at all. Assuming you have all the sound and everything turned off. Some cameras, they fake the uh, shutter sound. But uh, you can get silent operation, which is very useful, you know, in churches or any kind of other event where you need a silent shutter. And also, it's vibrationless, right? We talked about shutter shock, where the mechanical shutter might cause vibrations in the camera that can actually show in your images, especially with our very high resolution cameras uh, nowadays. So silent shutter eliminates that problem and you can get very, very clean images. Um, and of course, there's going to be less wear and tear on the camera, particularly the mechanical shutter portion, uh, because it doesn't have to move any moving parts when you're using electronic shutter. And another nice thing is, is uh, manufacturers are coming up with innovative ways to use electronic shutter. So now we have features like Pro Capture and 4K, 6K photo modes, and we have high res shot mode. These are just off the top of my head. I'm sure there's many more. Uh, but, you know, I think over time, manufacturers can think of really interesting ways to use electronic shutter that you would never be able to do with a mechanical shutter. Now, of course, the cons we've talked about, right? The banding with artificial lighting, the rolling uh, distorted images. But one I haven't mentioned yet is uh, flash. If you want to use flash with your camera, normally you cannot use a silent or electronic shutter with flash. You have to use a mechanical shutter. But of course, even that's changing. Uh, for example, recently the Nikon Z9 was released with no mechanical shutter, electronic shutter only. And yet it has a sync speed with flash up to one two hundredth of a second. And I actually I read somewhere that the Sony A1 is the same, but some people have been able to get up to one sixteen hundredth of a second. Uh, also, there's virtually no banding and uh, rolling shutter effect with the Nikon Z9. Uh, the few tests I've seen, people are taking, uh, you know, silent shutter, electronic shutter at one eight thousandth of a second with no distortion. So... There are advances coming with the electronic shutter, and I think eventually those will trickle down to our more consumer grade cameras for the rest of us. Uh, but just be aware, generally speaking, uh, if you have a regular camera like I do, you know, you're not really going to be able to use a flash when you're using electronic shutter. And then finally, I just put this um, down. You know, I, I like the sound of a shutter when it's clicking and clacking. <laughs> When I'm out taking pictures, I think it adds to the experience. Uh, so when I'm using silent shutter, it's not quite as much fun as uh, when I'm using mechanical shutter. But uh, that's just a personal preference, and it's not really a con. So a lot of the pros and cons that I showed here will apply to most cameras. And uh, you can use it as guidelines when you make a decision, do I need to use mechanical shutter or electronic shutter?
So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, consider subscribing, hit the like button. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel so that I can continue making these videos, it makes it a lot easier. You can buy me a coffee. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.